Hi guys and girls, and welcome back to Zenus Minis. My name is Greg, and today we're taking a bit of a break from Games Workshop on Warhammer, Shock Horror, to focus on a game called Zombieside. So if you're new to Zombieside, it's a cooperative game where it's you versus the board, and it's made by a games company called Cool Mini or Not. You have to assemble a band of survivors and put them up against, you guessed it, a horde of relentless zombies. There's a variety of missions to complete along the way, loot to collect, and characters to level up. So it's all super fun. I've played it for quite a while. Uh, you probably see from the boxes that have been lurking in the back of my videos that I'm a big zombie side fan. So I'm really happy to finally bring it to the channel. To give you a bit of a history of the series, it started a good few years ago with the original zombie side that takes place in the modern day. So very much like The Walking Dead. After that, they went down the fantasy route with zombie side Black Plague and Green Horde. And now we're here with zombie side Invasion which is what we're unboxing today and that has a sci-fi theme so I'm really really excited to finally get stuck into these boxes I've got the core box I've got the black ops expansion and all the Kickstarter exclusives as well so what I'm gonna do is stop talking here and we're gonna get started with the core set so here is the zombie side invader core box so we're just gonna have a quick look at the box itself then open it up and take a look inside so we've got this awesome zombie side uh, artwork on the front we've got the I think they call civilians in this and then we've got these Xenos aliens dotted about the place so they are the zombified aliens and antagonists of the game so it's made by cool mini or not and guillotine games uh, let's have a look around the side it's a pretty big box heavy box so we got some more art there it's one to six players who can play it solo 14 plus and it takes around about one hour but that does depend on on what mission you are playing so nothing really else around the side there then on the back here we have got uh, the models we've got seven of these um or probably more than seven of these xenos um, characters so these are kind of just like the the main zombie guys and we got the fatties i think these are going to be the runners then and then the abomination and we've got the map there as well with the various cards and your character um, sort of inventory slots going on there. So we've got the blurb here, so um, we're at dawn of a new space age, <laughs> apparently. Um, it's a cooperative game, uh, play as a team with your friends and you all have to fight together against the Xenos Horde. So the game contents in total, there's 72 miniatures, you've got six survivors, workers, tanks and hunters, so I imagine that's split between the fatties, runners and um, walkers. Um, peacekeeper bots, so they're new I think, I haven't seen any sort of turrets other than maybe the trebuchet in um, Zombieside Green Horde. Got a sentry gun as well, and um, we got the dashboards and ID cards for those inventory trays. Got the coloured bases, 6 dice, 48 trackers, a load of mini cards, 125 and 65 tokens, and then we got a breakdown of the um, how many players, the age limit and the time it takes as well so that is the box let's open it up and take a look at what's inside so straight away we have got the rules and missions so this will break down how to play the game as it says on the front and then you'll have all the different missions break down the cards and player phase there so the zombies are controlled by the game itself so you haven't got a player controlling them they just kind of automatically do their thing combat security rooms oxygen and supply so i think the oxygen supply rooms and airlocks are kind of a new feature in this game um seven plus survivors apparently um we've got the black ops box as well so we'll be going through that a bit later messing with the difficulty and then we've got the missions here so sorry i think the one board we looked back then was kind of explained maybe line of sight or something like that these are the missions we've got here, so placing of sentries and exit points, all that good stuff. And then you've got to break down the skills at the back. So your um, characters, your civilians, actors, I think they're called as well, loads of different names for them, will all have their individual skills. So this will break down what they do. And then the index as well. And a nice summary page at the end, just a kind of quick reference. So awesome, there's the rules book, then we've got the kind of like spawning points I think these are. Um, not 100% sure what they're called, but those cards are there. Um, move this to the side first, we'll check out the tokens, we'll come back on the models. 
So here we've got a sheet then of all your tokens on your game board. So um, these are the alert tokens, exit points, spawn points and various other tokens as well. You've got the doors there too. And then you've got all the game tiles by here. So we won't go through each and every tile. You'll have different rooms. Um, then you'll have your airlocks and loads of different options there as well. So those are all your cardboard bits. So I'm just gonna move this to the side. And we're gonna get stuck in with the miniatures. Cool. So, these are pretty awesome. So, I've always liked the models from um, Cool Mini or Not. They're really detailed. Really looking forward to painting these up as well. So, I'll probably use contrast to get all these done quite quickly because there's quite a lot of um, models in the box. I'm trying to get a bit of focus there. So, these are going to be your walkers or your regular kind of Xenos troops. And this is then will be your. I'm going to take a while to learn the. Um, the new names of these guys. <laughs> these are going to be your runners, I think. And um, where's my focus gone? There we go. So they're cool. And you got the fatties, but here then. Um, let's see if we can get. There we go. So very Cthulhu looking uh, creatures. We've got tentacles going on. We've got kind of this like octopus looking mouth thing happening there. So I think they've definitely taken a bit of inspiration from. HP Lovecraft, I think. And then here we've got the Abomination. So a massive, crazy looking thing, you know? Again, loads of tentacles. You've got these weird teeth going on and like even like in the groin area there, I'm not really too sure what that is. Um, like little mouths or crustacean things kind of working its way around. But a really awesome looking model. This one's going to be quite fun to paint and probably work really well with the contrast paints from Games Workshop as well because you've got all these kind of details which um, work really well with those paints. Cool, so we're going to move on then to the turrets. So let's get a bit of focus there. So I think this one's the Peacekeeper. And he looks awesome. So I'm not too sure, like, I'll have to read the rules on how you control these, whether they kind of like players themselves, or whether they're player controlled. So it'd be good to find those rules out. And then we've got the sentry turret. So looks cool, I imagine that's gonna do a lot of killing for you as well. And here then we've got the survivors. So this isn't open, so what I'll do is come back, I'll open this and we can look at each of the survivors individually. So I've opened up that card pack now, and we'll have a look at each of them. So this is, let's get a bit of focus there, Baraka, and I think this is her model here. Um, there we go. So I think this one's the Soldier. They're split into two types, so Soldiers will have different abilities, and I think the other ones may be like just civilians or something, I'm not 100% sure. We're going to have to read up on that. So that is Baraka. Then we've got Cole, who is this guy here. So kind of almost like a Han Solo hipster guy. <laughs> and that's his card there. Let's get a bit of focus on that. There we go. So he gets like free search actions. So a load of cool stuff. So that is Cole. Then we got Jared, so he's got like the American flag on him, so pretty patriotic I imagine. And his character is here. So yeah, kind of Space Marine-esque, you know, um, or even like actually the Fallout armor is probably a better comparison. But he looks pretty cool. And then we've got, I can't get these out now. We have Magnus. Or even like StarCraft, I think they've got similar armor. It's like a blend between like StarCraft, Warhammer, 40k, Space Marines, and uh, a bit of Fallout, the, the uh, power armor from that. And this uh, this guy has like this big, big old gun going on. It's almost like a light machine gun. Another cool looking model. Then we have 
Mitsuki. So it looks like these are all being brought from different countries. I think the other one was Denmark. I can't remember his flag. Um, but we've got um, the American guy, and this is the, uh, by the looks of it, the Japanese character, Mitsuki. And she is here. So she's got like dual wielding pistols by the looks of it. And some bags on the back, so maybe like a medic, or I'm not too sure. Let's uh, have a look at a card. She does machine actions, and so yeah, I think she's like more of the, an engineer maybe type. So she looks awesome. And then we've got Vivian, who definitely takes uh, inspiration from Ripley. Uh, with the kind of Sigourney Weaver looking face, quite pale, with the same sort of hair. And then we've got this like flamer weapon she's got, and even the pose is very Sigourney Weaver in Aliens. So that's pretty awesome. I know they take a lot of reference from pop culture, but you tend to find that in the expansion packs or the extra heroes. So it's great to see one of those kind of work its way into the, the core box. And the model is be here. So awesome pose. Really nice model, a lot of detail in there as well. So really looking forward to, to playing this game. So those are the models on the top tray. Underneath we'll go through the, the character slots as well and all that. But we've just got um, some extra tiers of zombies below there. So we won't go through each, each of those because they're exactly the same as the top level. And on the inside of the box then you've got kind of like the layouts of how the models um, should be kind of put in and out of the box. So what we'll do is have a look at some of these character trays. So you've got options there for all your, let me get a focus there, there we go. So you've got the option for your inventory, you've got your body armor there and there, and then you've got your left and right hands, plus options for the pegs when it comes to selecting your abilities and things like that. And then you've got the, the tracker here, um, which will be for your threat level when it comes to the zombies. So as you kill, the game gets harder until you get into the orange and then the red potentially, and loads more zombie aliens are gonna be coming your way. Um, but you'll also get ability points and unlock things like that as you level up. And then the last couple of things then, we've got dice. So these are just kind of basic dice really. There's nothing really special about them. Um, we've got the bases, different colored bases for your character, and then we got the different colored pegs as well. And lastly then, we've got all the cards. So let's see if I can just quickly open this up and take you through some of them. So we've got different weapons. These are the prototypes, so these are gonna be the, the best weapons. I probably won't appear on every mission, but some select missions may have them. Then we got Regular weapons, cattle prods, oxygen tanks, um, peacekeeper bots, falchion, sentry guns, ablative. So we've got armor, so there's loads of different stuff assault, shotguns, canisters, and then we're going to move on to the zombies as well. So as you play in the game, zombies will spawn randomly, depending on what cards you draw, and these are going to be the ones um, that will well spawn. So you've got the workers, which again I think are the walkers, the tanks, which are the fatties. Um, hunters which are going to be your runners so and then you've got super abomination or spoiler abomination so yeah the obviously the abominations so some of these will spawn 10 8 6 or 4 depending on your threat level so it keeps things quite interesting and quite difficult and if you've got some of the extra expansions you can shuffle in extra abominations or creature cards things like that into that deck but these are going to be two separate decks one for your equipment which you get from going into rooms and the other for the zombies which spawn well the zombies <laughs> so guys that is the core box what we're going to do now is check out some of the other stuff that came with my kickstarter pledge so we've seen the core box and this is the expansion zombie side black ops so this will be an add-on for the main game so let's have a check out of this box. We've got a new creature on the front with some Spec Ops looking characters, hence the name I guess, Black Ops. And this guy has like a beard thing, so it looks almost like a bit of like a swamp creature alien. So <laughs> looking forward to seeing what that looks like. Let's have a look around the edge of the box then. So same things there, we've got uh, your age limit, you know, 14 plus, 1 to 12 players by the looks of it. That's quite a lot of players, I think the other one was 1 to 6. Yeah, so maybe this 
allows you to add yeah definitely more players then to to the game. Take about an hour and on the box and or the bottom of the box. We've got to break down what's in here, so we've got all our characters there, we've got an extra sentry turret, we've got the big bearded Xenos abomination creature there, 27 equipment cards, um, so I think it breaks it down for you, yeah. 9 miniatures, 6 survivors, 1 juggernaut, that's the name of it, abomination, a new Crowley bot, a meteor sentry gun, 6 survivor dashboards and ID cards, coloured bases, trackers, mini cards, so you get extra cards to mix in with your equipment. 26 tokens, 3 game tiles, and the double sided, and obviously the rule book as well. And yeah, it is 1 to 12. So, this one does look. Uh, let's have a look. So, they're deeply entrenched on the planet, uh, threatening to turn everything into an infected hive. So, the Black Squad uh, to accomplish 10 missions behind em enemy lines. So, yeah, very spec ops. Um, you will need new weapons and machines to face the new Juggernaut Abomination. So, it's going to be a new creature. And it's guarding the Xenium pods in three new game tiles. Representing an infested base. Are we strong enough to wear black? Well, I'm sure we're going to find out as we play through this expansion. So let's have a check out of what is inside. There we go. So we have got the rule book. So rules and missions. So obviously this is going to be shorter than the main rule book because... Uh, it doesn't contain the core rules, you're just going to have to follow them, and this will just add a breakdown of the new creatures and things that are in there, and then we've got all the new missions. So, I really love the artwork as well, I don't think I mentioned it when I was looking through the, the core book, um, but really love the artwork. I think I've always liked the artwork with the zombie side, but they've gone a bit different with this before, it was quite uh, comic-ish and cartoony, where this is more kind of down the route of sci-fi fantasy high fantasy rather than kind of the comic side but it does work looks awesome and again this is very kind of 40k in a way um these wouldn't be a miss in the inquisition i guess <laughs> or maybe like imperial guard or something like that but they do look awesome cool then we got our tiles so we got three new tiles that come with this game and they're different colors and different artwork than the others, and we got some extra tokens here as well, some more noise tokens, some airlocks by the looks of it, and spawn points. And here's the exciting bit, the characters themselves. So I'm just going to move that to the side, get them out of here. There we go. So, where are the cards? They're not there. Oh, there they are. What I'll do then, same as before, I'm going to come back, cut this open, and we'll go through each of the characters. Okay, so we got the cards open, let's have a look at these models. So first up, we have got this guy, who's the uh, Abomination. What was the name of this guy again? Let me just check. The Juggernaut Abomination, this guy is. So, he's got a bit of buck going on there. <laughs> a lot of maybe... Uh, personal grooming to do as well around here um, so yeah he's a lump of a guy again I think this is gonna work really well with the contrast paints you know painting up in almost like a Nurgle theme or something like that you know quite decayed or maybe just like um, pale purples or lilacs or things like that so he's gonna be quite fun to to paint up and play against then we've got the Crowley um, turret so it actually looks like let me get focus on that actually there we go that's better so it actually looks like we got a peg underneath there which is holding him in place so i imagine saves in having the joins of those thin legs to the base i've got loads of artillery on this one so hopefully he'll be quite handy and helpful in the game and then we've got a new turret so that looks pretty cool so that's going to do a lot of zombie killing for us hopefully and then we've got the characters as well. So let's have a look at this sheet. So we've got Andre. Let's see if we can find him. This guy. I think it's this guy. Let's get a focus. There we go. So yeah, he looks cool. Pretty badass. Got the trench coat on the go. Got an SMG as well. And some sort of like gas mask. And obviously a mohawk. To make him even more badass. <laughs> so that is Andre. Then we have Fiona. Let's get a zoom in on that. So she's got zero G run, so I imagine that's something to do with maybe going outside of the rooms and dealing with the oxygen and things like that. 
a lucky remote control bot, so those are her rules. Let's find out her model. I think this is it. There we go. So that's her model there, so quite an elegant little pose there. Having a bit of a stroll, killing some Xeno zombies. Quite chilled. <laughs> Looks awesome though, love that model. Then we have Gene. So he's the born leader, so I imagine he is the leader of this, this group. And I think he's the one... Where is he? This guy here. So let's get focus. There we go. So yeah, very stoic pose, very leadership-like. One foot forward, kind of can, kind of uh, standing straight up. And again, he's got like the SMG, very tactical looking. Got his trench coat on the go. He looks cool. And then we've got Kyle, so he's going to be our heavy gunner guy. So he's got enhanced sensors, ironclad worker, and just tough. <laughs> and he does look at, let's see where he is. He's got this huge mini gun going on. And yeah, this guy looks badass. I hope he plays uh, pretty well uh, too, because I'm not too sure. I mean, I imagine they get all new weapons, but the, the weapons they come with, I guess, in... The previous versions of Zombie Side, they're all kind of hand handling and holding weapons, but it does depend, obviously, what you get from the rooms and stuff. So I hope maybe he starts. I don't know. Actually, I don't think he does start with anything, but yeah, it'd be good to get him the big old gun and uh, shooting down hordes of those um, Xenos zombies or workers or hunters or can't remember the last one, <laughs> but just killing those guys. And then we got Maria. So I really love the art on this one. And where is she? Here, I think, yeah. So yeah, she looks pretty cool. Not as kind of elegant as the other lady that's in here, but um, a bit more maybe, maybe tough or a bit more ruthless with her kind of like just trudging forward rather than kind of elegantly strolling. So maybe she's the tough lady in the bunch. And lastly then, we've got Solomon. So this guy has plus one die melee. <laughs> uh, bloodless. So this guy's all about probably cutting up things and destroying things in melee, which makes sense because he is this dude here. And he's got, uh, again, an SMG, a trench coat, but he's got this cool looking chainsaw arm mounted thing with blades all over it. So he's probably up for carving uh, a lot of zombies up in, in melee in close combat. So those are the Spec Op Survivors, look pretty awesome, I mean I've not really taken a look at what's in the Hero Box, but so far these guys are probably my favourite, and they come with these awesome coloured pegs which are different from the last box, and they're more kind of like a pastely, and you know, you've got that kind of like uh, purpley pink colour, and the oranges, so I really like these colours, because you know, I'm a bit like that. <laughs> yeah, those are awesome. And lastly then we've got the uh, different weapon cards. So obviously we've got SMGs there. The Blackbird SMG. We've got a shock lever of some sorts. Oxygen tanks again. So I'm looking to see if it's got that big old gun. Crowley bot. Downtown bros do a wield in. Grenade launcher. Nova cutters. And there we go. we got a Pyre minigun. So I imagine that's what that guy is holding. And we got a light machine gun, or not actually, this is just a roaster machine gun. And a chainsaw as well, so again, that's what that guy's got going on in his arm. And then we got the Juggernaut Abomination cards, which will mix in with your normal deck, I imagine. So that is the Black Ops uh, box. We're going to check out then some of the Kickstarter extras that came. Um, so that's going to be the Hero box or the Civilian box, and some other bits and bobs. So now we're moving on to the Kickstarter exclusives and this is the civilian extras pack So if you did back through Kickstarter then you get a load of extra characters and abominations and things like that But before we open this box the one thing I wanted to say is Last year I backed um, the green horde and as part of that Kickstarter obviously you've got a very similar box But the difference is let's have a look at it If 
Now that box, which is the Horde box, and it contains all your extra characters and abominations and all that sort of stuff, you've got an actual display box, so very similar to what we've just shown in terms of the Black Ops and the Core box. You've got this artwork on the front, you've got the same sort of build quality, and on the back then you've got all this lovely artwork of each of the characters, um, the abominations, and a breakdown of what's in there, so it's an actual proper box, which was awesome, you know, I display this, you know, and it's great to have, um, especially to keep all your models in there. But this year, with the Kickstarter exclusive, we just get this. <laughs> a cardboard box, no artwork, very basic, and even the extra stuff, which I'll go through in a minute, um, that you pay for. So I paid extra for, like, I think it's like the orphans um, sort of group of survivors and things like that. Last year, they came again in uh, actual boxes with artwork. This year, however, Everything is in these very plain cardboard boxes. So Cool Mini or Not has cut a bit of corners there and cut some costs as well, which is a bit disappointing. I did have expectations of having um, a similar box to how uh, it arrived last year, um, but this is what we got. So what we're going to do then, we'll open it up and check out what's inside. And just to show you, there is like literally nothing on this other than that. <laughs> so cool, let's open it up. So here we have loads of extra zombies. We've got some extra walkers there and what I've done just to preempt this is already opened the character pack so we'll go through those. So we've got this kind of like the new zombie types here. Let's get some focus on that. There we go. So these like almost like face hugger looking things going on there. They'll all have new names which I'll have to learn. <laughs> these are probably some of my favourite um, models and they're kind of like these fly-in face huggers. So like in Prometheus almost with that thing kind of came out of the, the egg at the beginning or I can't remember really where um, where that creature came in but it kind of looks like that. Let me get focus back there, I lost in a minute. So that's pretty awesome. And then we've got these other guys going on here. So yeah, really like all of these. We got an extra abomination, so I think this is the same as what was in the core box. Yeah. I don't think these pose differently, I'll have to check, but I think it's exactly the same model, just an extra one. Then we have this guy. So another big <laughs> fat guy with a huge butt going on. So proper weighty abominations here. And then we've got more kind of like the alien looking things. So we've got a couple of these big dudes. But then we've got this one which is definitely taking inspiration from the alien queen. Or at least uh, one of the alien characters. Even a bit of Tyranids in there maybe from 40k. We've got the Scythe and Talons going on. It's definitely a hybrid of uh, some sci-fi favourites going on. Then we've got this Starcraft looking thing. Let's zoom in on him. There we go. He looks pretty cool as well. I think they're called the Brood in StarCraft, but yeah, it definitely reminds me of that. Uh, I think these guys are similar, maybe a different pose to what's in the core box. But these are going to be like the workers, I think. And at the top then, we've got this big guy. So he's pretty cool. Got these things sticking up and... Bet he's going to be an absolute nightmare to fight because usually these um, abominations all come with their own individual rules, which makes them unique to play. And this guy's fallen off his his base. Um, I'll put him back on later, and if I can't get him in there, can't try it later. And this guy then reminds me of I think it's in the Clone Wars. We're in the in that pit, um, Star Wars, and they're fighting all those different creatures. And I'm sure there's a creature that looks very similar to this. Um, but nevertheless, it's uh, awesome, fierce looking abomination there. And yeah, we do have a card pack here, so this will have the names of them. So let's see if I can just get into this pretty quickly. And we can just quickly go through those names. So we've got first up the baby faced abomination which looks like it's the big guy down there in the bottom right. Buddy, abo buddy bot? Where's that? I think he might be underneath. 
We've got a buddy bot abomination, which looks like Claptrap from Borderlands. We've got a sentry gun abomination as well, which uh, looks like something from Portal, maybe. Um, Mother-in-law abomination. See, so, yeah, great names on these. Shadow abomination, so that's the alien-looking thing. Uh, Stomper, which is the huge guy. With the thing sticking out of his back. And then we've got the Widowmaker, which is, I'm guessing, the spider-looking thing. From uh, from Star Wars, then we've got extra things so those uh, face hugger looking things with the tails that look like a plant. They're flingers spawn. Then we've got seeker worker spawn, so they are different by the looks of it. Um, and we've got xenomoths, so that's the the flying things. That's what they're called. And then we've got buddy bot. I'm guessing if you want to use it as a um, a friendly character, and we've got the sentry gun there as well. So that is layer one. Let's have a check out of layer two. I'm just going to move this to the side a minute. So here we've got all of the characters. So other than the box, I'm really happy with with everything that's in here. We've got a load of different things going on. So here then we've got the buddy bot. So yeah, very much a, a mix between BB-8 and Claptrap there. So he can be either a good guy or a bad guy by the looks of it, but should be fun going up against that. And I like that they put these little things in as well, because I think in the Green Horde you had like the Abomina Bunny. Um, and the Unicorn looking thing, so <laughs> pretty fun to play against. So this is the Sentry. He's got a little stand there as well in the middle. And we got some extras here, I think. So some hunters, and some tanks, I think these guys are called, actually. So they're going to be your fatties. Cool. So let's check out some of the characters. So I not, might not be able to find them all, because uh, they've all got... God, how many characters are here? I mean, there's quite a few. So we'll try. So here, then, we've got Alison. So she is the one with the chihuahua on her back. Um, it might be easier actually just to go through each of these models on their own because I'm not too sure. Oh wait, here she is. So this is Alison. There we go. So she's got like a pistol and she's got a nice little dog on her back. So a really cool looking model. Then we have Commander Amadi. So he's going to be a big guy, so hopefully easier to find, and here he is. So again, he's got one of those suits of power armor on. Big old gun, and some sort of axe. So, very warlike. Then we've got Butcher Carl. And this guy's a pig. <laughs> uh, I can't remember that game that's coming out, um, that people have been raving about for a while. Where there's like the human-animal hybrids. But maybe that's taken from there. So he looks cool. He's got some sort of like shotgun or something going on there. But he's got like a butcher robes and or overalls actually, not robes. Cool. Then we've got, so this is going in a bit of an order now hopefully. We've got Captain Warlock. Uh, it kind of looks like Lemmy from Motorhead. But I'm sure there was a character like that in previous uh, editions of Zombieside. And this is the model here. So, pirate guy, got a flintlock looking pistol, a little dragon going on, and a sword. Um, then we have Carlotta. Is this Ramirez from Aliens? I think it might be. Let's see if we can find her model. Uh, here she is. Cool, so she's got like a big old flamer going on, and yeah, definitely taking in spreads from um, that lovely lady from Alien, or Aliens. Cool. Now we have Cloud Nebula from Guardians of the Galaxy, possibly. So let's see where she is, that's not her. That might be it. No, she's got like a stick thing. Oh, here we go. 
So opposite pose by the looks of it. Let's get focused there. So that is cloud, which, you know, I guess ties into space cloud being nebula. Commander Morton, so this is Morty. <laughs> Uh, let's see, he's an easy one to find, I'll recognise that guy. Here he goes, here's Morty. Little kid with a pistol, I wonder if he's, uh... He's a born leader, apparently, on his, uh, on his card, so... A little bit of a, a joke going on there. Then we got... Dr. Dick. <laughs> and he is here. So he's got, like, these mecha tendrils going on. A bit Dr. Octopus. So he looks cool. Obviously back to the future, Doc Brown. But in this, he's Doc Dick. <laughs> then we have, I guess this is one of the more controversial ones, but uh, real fun as well, Dr. Falconer. So this is obviously Mr. Hawkins or Dr. Hawkins, Stephen Hawkins himself, and he is in this badass robotic wheelchair, and I'm pretty sure he would love this um, if he was still with us. Because that looks pretty awesome. He's got a screen there. He's got like flamers there. He's got like a machine gun there. He is looking good. They've definitely done him justice. If he lived in this universe. He'd be a born survivor. Cool. So then we've got Dr. Steak Freeze. Um, I have no idea who this is. So... There he is, but here, I don't know who he's based on, what sort of pop culture reference, but this is the model. So he's got some sort of rapier sword thing and a pistol. Can't really talk too much about him because I don't know what, what pop culture reference he's he's based on. I know I've made a mistake. Dr. Dick is not Doc Brown. Dr. Dick is actually Rick. <laughs> Which makes sense, Dr. Dick, Rick. Where is he? He is... not that. Let's see if we can find him. There he is. Cool. So that is Rick, and he's got his uh, trademark bottle. And hair. And he's got a pistol as well. Lab coat, so very... Um, very much in the image of uh, Rick from Rick and Morty. And this is actually Doc Brown. Is Doctor what? <laughs> so we won't look at him again. He controls sentries, things like that, and senses. So two doctors, different models. Then we got Dorian the Grey, which I imagine is uh, taken from Dorian Grey. It's the logical link, and that is this guy here. So the typical sort of alien, the Greys that you see a lot of people talk about <laughs> online. I come to visit them, especially in rural parts of uh, America, let's say. Cool. And we've got 8-Ball. So a bit of a Tony Stark looking guy. Uh, in an Iron Man suit. So let's see if we can find him. There he is. There was an Iron Man type character in the um, Green Horde box. But maybe he's made an appearance here as well. Then we have Emma. Um, and that looks like... Oh, I can't remember the um, the name of the film. With the, the AI robot doing the Turing test. But it kind of looks like that. So let's see if we can find her. I think that's her here. It's got the thing, the piece on the back of the head. And she's got a pistol. Then we've got Phaedra. So like a fish woman. Hopefully this one won't be too hard to find. Uh, she's got a big old gun. There we go. Actually, maybe it's more lizard. Got a bit of a tail going on there. So it looks like some of the aliens have joined the civilians as well. To try and defeat all these... Uh, Alien Zombies. Then we've got Gavin Greaser, and kind of a mix between Han Solo and Wolverine by the looks of that. I'm not too sure who he's meant to be based on, but his model is by here. 
I'm glad I'm quick at picking these out for you guys because it could have gone completely the different way. So that is Gavin the Greaser. Cool. Then we got Old Coast Gary, which is kind of like um, Chris Rock's character in Fifth Element, maybe, mixed with a bit of Lando Calrissian. <laughs> And there he is here. Let's get the focus proper. There we are. Yep. Yeah. Awesome looking model there. Really like the pose. And then we have Lieutenant Graham. So this guy's from the UK. Uh, where's his model? So you point in. So it's going to be this guy. So he's got like a big power pack, machine gun, power armor, and he is leading the way by the looks of it. Good old Britain. So here then is Hugo Harker. So he's a big guy by the looks of it, or lady, I'm not really too sure by that artwork. And the character is be here, so got like a, another one of those big chain swords going on, a lot of blades, a bit of a cloak, and a pistol, I'm not too sure what pop culture reference that is either, so if anyone else knows, let me know in the comments below. And then we've got Inshishvac, it's another alien looking guy. Um, I think that's him here, yeah. So there he is. So got the power armor on, but I think he's again an alien helping out the survivors. Then we've got the District 9 looking guy, Ixnix, Ixnix Kick, <laughs> I think that's how it's called. And then we've got his character here, so uh, another alien, bug looking dude. Looks pretty awesome, a lot of variety in this box. Then we've got Lieutenant G. I can't pronounce that either. And that character is here. So another cool looking model. And it looks like they're all their kind of their guns and SMGs are, are quite different as well. Uh, she's got a grenade happening. Again, red need to, to throw it probably. Preacher Carl, Judge Dredd, obviously. It's gotta be. Can't think of anything else. <laughs> and that character is. I can't find this one. Here. No, we've looked at that one already. Um, yeah, I'm just not seeing this one. Oh, there we go. So that is Preacher Carl. Cool. Then we've got Katie. I'm not sure what that's from, but she is... Here. That is Katie, double pistols. Cool, then we've got Lara. So is this, um, might be from uh, Fifth Element maybe? Can't, I haven't seen that film in ages. Cool looking model, got a badge going on, got a pistol. Then we've got Madame Singleton. And she is here. Pretty relaxed pose going on. Looks pretty cool though, quite piratey. Then we got Major Sharp, so a lady in sort of power armor. And she's got like kind of these sticky out things going on there, almost like, like needles. And there she is. So this one looks pretty cool, this is probably one of my favorite looking sculpts is pretty unique <laughs> so awesome looking model yeah I am loving these and then we got Mercedes and she's a larger lady curvier lady somewhere um, why can't I find her oh there we go 
Huh. He's got tiny legs. <laughs> kind of a larger upper half by the looks of it. Cool. And we've got Norton, which is the dwarf guy, I think. Yeah, here he is. Not an easy one to find there. So he's got a gun bigger than he is, which is perfect. Love this guy. Then we've got Morty McAllister, which another Morty. <laughs> um, from Back to the Future, so whereabouts is he? I'm surprised they haven't put them next to each other, but I suppose it's just the best design of the box, isn't it? Um, let's have a look. Where is he? I think it's getting harder to find now. There he is. Cool. So he's got a bit of a flamer on the back. Small SMG. Then we got Cat. Cat person, new restart. And she is here. So again, another unique looking alien character to make up your uh, group of survivors. Then we've got Buck Buck. <laughs> uh, again, another alien or mutant looking guy. And he is... Yes, the last couple now I've got to find. No idea where this guy is. Oh, here we go. So you've got the kind of the two guns sticking up there, pistol and maybe another pistol or an SMG. Only got a couple left now. We've got pink, which looks like Blade Runner maybe. And she's easy to find. We've got the afro going on there. So she's got a sword, or actually not a sword, it's more like a cane and a pistol. And yeah, definitely the Blade Runner looking character, Richard Kindred. So he is somewhere. What's he got? Shotgun looking thing, is that? Uh, this is getting hard, there we go. So yeah, he looks awesome. Got a bit of a trench coat going on, almost like the Black Ops guys we went through. Then we got rear tank girl, uh, so larger version of tank girl by the looks of it. And uh, she is definitely looks like a tank and definitely looks like she could probably fix a tank as well. Got a bit of a wrench going on, really heavy set, probably going to be a bit of a brute in the game. Looks absolutely awesome. Again, is this Blade Runner squirrely? Not 100% sure. And that character is um, be here. So he's got like a belt-fed machine gun of some sorts. Looks awesome. And the last one then we have is Val. I'm not too sure what she's based on, but let's see if we can find her. And there she is. Yeah, I really like the pose on this one. Got kind of like a gun sticking out there and kind of dual wielding pistols. Awesome looking model. So guys, that is pretty much everything in this box. So what we're going to do now is uh, move on to some of the other things that came with the Kickstarter. So we've only got a couple of more things to go through and these were the optional add-ons um, to the Kickstarter pledge. So we've got the Play Gang Survivor Pack. Uh, the Orphan Gang Survivor Pack, and I think the Solia Extra Pack. So some small boxes just to check out to finish things off. So these were optional buys, I think, um, and they cost around about $15 per pack. And again, they come in these cardboard boxes. So just to compare with what I had last year, so I did buy some optional extras last year for um, the Green Horde. And that's one of the boxes that the optional extras came in. So we've got three survivors there, and we've got a um, necromancer so three good guys and one bad guy but again we've got the full artwork um, and a bit of stuff about the artist or the creator and the characters on the back and the other thing I got was the rat king and swamp troll again great art and things on the back so you can display these they look nice and once again cool mini or not have cheaped out a little bit <laughs> and gone 
for these bland cardboard boxes, which makes me wonder, I think the Play Gang Survivor Pack and the Orphan Gang Survivor Pack are going to be going to retail. So I'm pretty sure they're not going to go to retail looking like this. Uh, I could be wrong, they could be exclusives, which is why they've been packaged like this, but I can't believe that they would take them to retail looking like that, or the fact that, um, you know, we, we paid for these optional extras. In a way, I could understand it with the Hero Pack, they are Kickstarter exclusives, not necessarily going to be in retail packaging, but if you are buying things um, for retail as an optional extra, um, and you have backed the, the Kickstarter, then you know, you should receive it in, in retail packaging. You know, I'm not going to sell these on. These are kind of just for me to use. I don't sell any of my zombie side stuff. But again, it would just be nice to have had that nice and polished packaging. But with that said, let's check out what's inside because that is the important stuff. This is just the, the trivial things that go on in my life. Um, so let's have a look at what's inside this one. So this is the Play Gang Survivor Pack. And we have got five miniatures there. And we've got the cards, so let me just get my trusty scalpel and get this open. Or at least try to get it open. There we go. So, in here then, we've got the five survivor cards and gang rules. So, I didn't know they came with extra rules, but uh, that's pretty cool. So, here we've got Sydney. So he's got the gas mask on and something in his left hand or right hand actually. And this is the model then. So I'm guessing they're called Plague Gang because, you know, they've got all these gas mask things on. Maybe use plague weapons or at least are immune to it. We'll find that out as we kind of work through it. We got Pat who's got like the Plague Doctor face mask on. And that's this guy here. Let's get the focus. Got twin swords. Looking pretty badass. Got a bit of a hoodie on the go as well. And let's see what his rules are actually. Xenolink actions. Dual expert, so I guess that makes sense when it comes to the swords. Um, put the rules aside for a sec. Then we've got uh, Carmen. So that's going to be this lady here. So she's got some sort of like saw thing going on. I'm not really too sure what that is. Because it's got like kind of a belt feed going into the back. So close combat maybe. Uh, she's got a ranged, uh, ranged ability. So then we got Finn who's the sniper. So this is this guy. So long ranged weapon there. But still got like a belt fed. Uh, magazine on the back got some uh, backpack and supplies and I think it's another gun there and obviously the gas mask as well and then we got McIntyre so he's gonna be the heavy guy and the biggest guy of the lot he's got this <laughs> crazy looking weapon here so it looks like a flamer maybe you got like the gasoline there or the the fuel going on, we've got this pipe that goes all the way around the back and then we've got this big giant sort of uh, bayonet <laughs> attached on there so uh, skewering probably quite a few Xenos zombies and then getting them all nice and toasty with the flamer but like a very old school looking flamer, it just looks like a pipe really with some nozzles and tubes and stuff like that on it and then he's got like the face mask going on there as well and then we've got the gang rules. So let's just have a quick look at this. So we won't go through the, the actual story there, but that'll tell you a bit more about them. But the play gang members may perform search actions in any type of zone, not only rooms that include exterior mold and pit zones. Oh sorry, that includes exterior mold and pit zones. So instead of being able to instead of being locked out of some areas when it comes to search, because I think um, normal civilians can search some places and soldiers can search others. Uh, looks like these guys can just pretty much search everywhere because they're all hazmated up and they can, I guess, look in in different places without worrying too much about their health. So that is the Plague Gang Survivor Pack. I'm just going to pop this away and we'll be back to look at the Orphans. So here we have the Orphans Gang Survivor Pack. 
And this is pretty unique because as far as I know, other than the Stranger Things cast in Green Horde, there's not been that many kids or teenagers, as far as I'm aware, in Zombicide. And it makes sense when you think of horror films, you know, a lot of them, nothing really bad ever happens to the kids. Like, you know, it's always a bit spooky, uh, you know, with the exception of Walking Dead. I mean, you had that kind of like zombie girl and, and things like that in there. But for the most part, you know, even in the ring and stuff like that, you know, the kids are pretty safe. But in zombie side, they're not that safe. <laughs> um, I've lost loads of survivors after playing this game for quite a while. So when I saw the Orphans Gang pack, same as with Stranger Things, I love Stranger Things and kind of the 80s scene when it came to like, um, you know, kids and supernatural and horror films like Poltergeist, E.T., all that sort of stuff. So the Orphans Gang pack um, was something was uh, a no-brainer for me when it came to picking up an optional extra. So we're going to open this up and check out what is inside. So we've got the Orphan Gang, Orphan Gang rules. Um, so I'm just going to get this open. And then we'll check out the models. we got the wizard straight away, we can see. Cool. Alright, so let's check out the rules first. We'll do it the opposite way around than we did the Plague Gang. So these guys, the Orphan Gang members, start with Unstoppable as an additional skill at blue level for free. So when they're at the lowest, um, the lowest level on, on the tracker, they get the Unstoppable uh, skill or perk. So I'm not really too sure what that Unstoppable perk is. I don't know. I haven't checked that out. So but they get it um, right at the start. Cool, so let's have a look at these orphans then. So we've got Baby, so got glasses on and a hat, which is this character here. So got some big moon boots on, a pistol, kind of flying wings on the back, and a hat and glasses, so looking pretty cool. And she has, again, Unstoppable, two cards in terms of search so a lot of a lot of good stuff going on there then we have clops so that would be this one here i think yeah just look for the one with the one eye so we've got a bit of a bigger gun um again looking pretty cool like all the kind of the folds and stuff in the trousers really detailed Miniature, but they think they've all got like these big moon boot things going on. <laughs> Probably to keep them stuck to the ground in like low gravity and stuff. Then we've got Goliath, so that's going to be the big guy, which I imagine is kind of like the protector of this like orphan group of kids. He's got like powerful looking uh, gauntlets on, stomachs out, <laughs> kind of like a unique looking model that. Then we got Ink, and that one will be, here is it? No, 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 it's got a hat on. There we go. So I've thrown up some uh, hand symbols there. It's got like a shotgun looking thing, again the moon boots, glasses, backwards hat. Kind of reminds me of like Mighty Max. <laughs> That was a great cartoon and series of toys. Loved those when I was a kid. Then we've got Jenny, or yeah, Jenny. So she seems like the companion to um, the Goliath, wearing similar sort of gear. So we've got kind of two pistols, uh, big boots again, some things on the back, so pretty cool. And lastly then we've got Wizard, so that's like a proper 80s sci-fi throwback. <laughs> I can't remember how many things were actually called like Wizard, um, you know, got some in Marvel and, and things like that. So this looks like the VR sort of guy, maybe like psychic abilities, no weapons, just kind of got that weird looking VR kind of headset in a bit of like a, yeah, a bit of like a psychic sort of pose, isn't it, you know? almost hovering off the ground and that is it that is the orphans pack from zombie side invader so we've only got one last thing to check out now and that are the solia extra pack this is the final item then out of the kickstarter that i received 
and this is the Solia's extra pack. So I couldn't really remember what was in this box, um, but we'll find out together. So here then we've got, oh, quite a lot of stuff actually. Uh, right, we'll move the box out of the way. So we've got these cards again, so let me just get in there. And open them up for you. Cool, so we've got four characters here. We've got Dr. Fisher, Frank, Kilgore, Massimo. And then we've got Soldier Pack Rules for New Abominations. So this comes with two new abominations by the looks of it. We've got Brood Children or Brood Mother Abomination Brood Children Rules. And then we've got the Xenium Horror Abomination, which is, I imagine, obviously is the other one. So let's have a look at the Brood Mother then. So that's going to be this thing, and it comes with a peg on the base, so we'll just put the base in there for now. But we'll kind of look at this model in a bit of detail. So this is awesome. It's got kind of like these tendril things coming up the back. Um, almost like a spider type thing, and imagine it kind of creates smaller ones, which is what these uh, creature things are on the right. Really awesome looking model. Yeah, I do like that. I think that's one of my favourite abominations. I mean, they put a lot of big, chunky, fat uh, abominations in here, which look absolutely amazing. But these, like, almost insecty looking ones are, are great as well. So we'll just pop that back in. And then we've got, what was this called again? The Xenium Horror Abomination. So again, another big, chunky looking one with a lot of tendrils. Especially on the back there. <laughs> So this one's going to be a lot of fun to paint. I do like the idea of painting all these different tendrils that are coming off him. He's got these kind of little spare arms going on underneath there. And kind of like a webbed face, almost like Predator face opening up. And then we've got these little little creatures here, which I think then work with the, the brood mother. Because, yeah, they're the brood children, so these will be part of her kind of gang so yeah a lot of variety as well when it comes to the aliens and not just with the abominations but with kind of extra um, you know extra zombies or the extra kind of xenos as well we've also kind of got the cards going on here so let's just have a quick look and open that up if I can get the scalpel in there we go Cool, so then, yeah, we've got the, let's get the focus, we've got the Brood Mother Abomination, the four of those, oh, I think that's it, then we've just got the Xenium Horror Abomination, so again, you would shuffle those into the zombie deck when you're playing your games. And now then we've got these extra heroes, so first up we've got Dr. Fisher, So that is Dr. Fisher, let's see if we can find the models, it's kind of got like the hood thing going on, so it's going to be this little dude here. And this is kind of a quirky looking guy, <laughs> it's kind of got like a data slate, very kind of Mechanicus. It would work great really as a model for that as well. Really like this guy, kind of got a robotic arm going on on the, the right hand side. So yeah, again another unique looking survivor. Uh, we're going to leave this guy to last because I do like him. We're going to go back to Massimo. Just because we've seen a lot of power armoured guys. So this is just another one of those. And he's got a sword. And kind of like a, another SMG looking thing. And uh, the power arm we, we've seen quite a lot of. And these are the kind of the, the unique guys in here as well. We've got Kilgore. So he looks like he's got like totems and skulls going on and loads of cybernetics and really awesome looking art there. So let's have a look at the model. So he's got this gun up here. We've got like peg legs, almost like sort of like just spikes for legs. I can't see if I can get the angle on that. He's got a trench coat on. So yeah, really unique looking guy. That's pretty awesome. And he's got then the, the skulls that are kind of joining his head up there. And then lastly then, we've got Frank. So this kind of looks more like the traditional Xenos that come in the box, or the bad guys. But this one is apparently is working for the survivors. And he has one of these awesome 
chainsaw looking things there, the buzz saw. Uh, he's got like an alien thing coming out of his his mouth, so much like the xenomorph in Aliens. And we've got the claw then on the left hand side. And he's a chunky looking guy. Really like the, the look of this dude. So I'm sure he's going to be a lot of fun to play. And he's got some, I think it's like a flame or is that just like the exhaust for that weapon? So again, another unique survivor. So a lot of great survivors in this box. But what we're going to do now, we've covered pretty much everything. We're just going to wrap up and go to the conclusion. Guys, that is the end of today's episode. Really hope you've enjoyed. If you have, drop me a like. Leave a comment below if you want to see more zombie side on the channel. And subscribe as well. But make sure you're clicking the bell icon. And that just means you'll be notified every single time I upload a piece of brand new content. And don't forget to check out the links in the video description as well. They'll take you to my Patreon where you can get access to early tutorials or private tuition. As well as my affiliated links if you want discount off models, paint, scenery, all that great stuff. So I'm hoping to bring more zombie side to the channel and I really hope you'll join me for that. But until then, thank you for watching, take care and I'll see you next time.